Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added our first weapon model, so now we have this pistol over here and in this episode we're going to add a few things to the pistol to make it feel and look better when we shoot. So the first thing we want to do is add a muzzle to the weapon. For this muzzle we're going to use the effects pack that we already have inside our project. So inside this effects pack we go into the weapons effect and we go into the prefabs and we can find this muzzle flash effect. Now we're going to drag it into the scene and we're going to unpack it completely because we're going to do a few changes over here and we don't want this to affect the actual prefab. First we are going to expand the player, we're going to expand the pistol and we're going to drag the muzzle flash into the bullet spawn because the muzzle should appear at the tip of the pistol and that's exactly where the bullet spawn is. So now when the muzzle is inside the bullet spawn we can set all the position to be zero and it will be in the exact middle. Next I want to make the scale of the muzzle effect a bit smaller because the one that we get is too big but of course if you have bigger weapons you should play around with this and see what fits your model. So I'm going to change it to 1.5, 10 and 10. Another thing that we want to change inside this prefab is the max particles inside the particle system. So instead of a thousand I'm going to make it 500. Now that the muzzle is ready we want to be able to activate it. So we go into our weapon script. Inside the weapon script we're going to have a game object that will be our muzzle effect. So public game object muzzle effect. And then when we shoot inside the fire weapon method we are going to activate this particle system. So muzzle get component. particle system and we're going to play the particle system. Now all we need to do is drag the muzzle effect into the inspector. Now when we run the game and we shoot we have this muzzle effect. Next we want to create a few animations for this model. Now something I want to say is that each weapon, each prefab will require you to create a new animation because the weapon script is something generic that will go on each weapon but the animation is something specific that you will have to create for each weapon. I'm going to show you how to create these animations for the pistol and later you can create it for other weapons as well. So the first animation will be an idle animation. This will be just some kind of sway, something to just make us feel like the weapon is actually held by a person. So to create this animation we're going to select our weapon and then we're going to open the animation window. If you don't have this window, you can go to window, animation and animation and it will open this window. Now when our weapon is selected, we're going to create a new animation. We will go to our assets and we're going to create a new folder. We're going to name it animations. And then inside we're going to name this new animation, idle and the name of the weapon because later we're going to have more weapons and we don't want to get confused. So all we're going to do is move the weapon a bit on the y-axis and then bring it back down. So it will be a 60 frame animation. We will click on the 30 frame. We're going to start recording and we're going to move the weapon a bit on the y-axis and you can see that it goes up and then it automatically created the beginning and then we click on the 60 frame and we move it back down to the original position. So now we can see that it just goes up and goes down. And now we can finish the recording. Next we want to create a recoil animation. So when we shoot the weapon it should kick back a bit and then it will really give us this feel that we're shooting a gun. So we're going to create a new clip, we're going to name it recoil and the name of the gun. And this animation should be very quick because the recoil is very quick so it's just going to be 
10 frames and we're going to click on the 5 frames. We're going to start recording and we're going to rotate the weapon on the x-axis about 10 units and then we're going to move it back to the original position. So zero and make sure that here it's also zero and you can see that it just kicks back and goes back down. And now we're going to finish the recording. Now before we can actually activate these animations from our script, we need to set everything inside the animator. So if you don't have this animator screen, you can go to window, animation and animator. So the first animation that we created is the idle, so it will become the default one. And if you don't see it as the default one, you can simply right click and make it the default state because this is the animation that will always run. We want this idle animation to be the default animation. And then when we shoot, we want to activate this recoil animation. So we're going to create a transition and then we're going to go back to the idle. Now, in order to trigger this recall animation, we're going to create a parameter and we're going to make it a trigger. And now it's important to know that we are going to use this parameter inside our weapon script. And this weapon script is going to sit on all of our weapons. So each time you create an animation for a different weapon, make sure this parameter has the same name. So we are going to name it recoil and make sure that all your weapons have the same parameter. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So now we click on the transition from the idle to the recoil and the condition will be this recoil trigger. Now we also want to disable the exit time because we don't want any kind of delay before or after the animation. So we're going to disable this and we're also going to set this to zero. For this transition, we're going to leave everything as it is. Now inside the weapon script, we're going to have a reference to the animator. And this is possible because the animator is on the same object with our weapon script. Now that we have access to the animator, we're going to activate this animation. So right after the muzzle effect, we're going to access the animator and we're going to set the trigger and we need to specify the name of the trigger. So again, because we're using this name inside this script, we always need to make sure that the parameter has the same name for every animation that we create. Another thing that we need to do is disable the looping for the recall animation because we only want it to play once. We click on the actual animation and we disable the loop time. For the idle, it's going to stay looping because we do want this to keep looping. Now, if we run the game, we can see that this idle animation is always playing. And when we shoot, we can also see this recoil. Now, if this idle animation is too fast for you, you can simply go to the animator, click on the idle animation, and here you can control the speed. So we're going to make it 0.5. And now you can see that the idle animation is much slower and looks better. The last thing we want to do in this episode is to add a shooting sound for this pistol. So because it's the first time we add sounds into this game, we need to create the sound manager. So we're going to collapse all of these, make some room, and we're going to create an empty object and name it sound manager. Then we're going to create a script with the same name on the sound manager. This sound manager should be a singleton, so we can just go to our global references and copy all of this, and then just rename it to be the sound manager. So now it becomes a singleton. Now there's a lot of ways to create sound managers, but because we don't have a lot of sounds in our game, we're going to keep it simple for now. So we're just going to have one audio source and we're going to drag our shooting sound to this audio source and then we're going to play it when we need to. So inside we're going to have a public audio source and we're going to name it according to the exact sound. So 
shooting sound and the name of the gun. Now, if we click on the sound manager, we can see that we need a reference to this audio source. So we're going to add a component audio source. And then inside this audio source, we're going to add a clip. So first we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name it sound. And you can find a link in the description for a shooting sound. So I'm going to import it as well. And now we're going to click on the sound manager and we're going to drag this sound into the audio clip. Now this is of course not the way we do it with a lot of sounds. The audio source should be some kind of channel that will play different clips and we simply change the clips using the script. But as I told you, we don't have a lot of sounds right now. So we're going to just drag the clip straight into the audio source. And of course, we also want to drag the audio source into this reference. And now in order to play this sound, we go back into our weapon script and right after the muzzle and the animator, we simply reference our sound manager instance, and then we find this shooting sound and we simply play this sound. Also make sure to disable this play on awake, otherwise it will just play the sound when we start the game and we don't want this to happen. So now when we run the game and we shoot, we have the muzzle, we have the recoil, and we have the sound. So now it's way more satisfying and it looks better. So that's all for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to start working on the reload of the weapon because we do want to have some kind of limit to our bullets. We want to be able to also see the amount of bullets on the UI. And little by little, we're going to add more and more things. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed to the channel and see you next time.